Hello, everyone, and thanks for listening to The Quality Hub, chatting with ISO experts. I'm your host, Xavier Francis, and today I'm here with Rick Crick, Director of Security Solutions here at Core Business Solutions. So glad to have you on the podcast, Rick. Well, I am glad to be here today. I think this is your first time, and we're really glad to have you here. We work together in some webinars, but this is your first time on a podcast, Correct. Correct. It is my first. And we're going to be discussing CMMI with you today. But before we get into that, could you share a little bit about your history and journey? Sure, I'd be happy to. Well, let's do the abridged version. Okay, okay. Um, So I started out many years ago as a high school teacher. Okay. You know, the math and science gig, so Mm -hmm. to speak, and then went into software development uh, for about 17 years. So not only did I was a program manager, project manager, quality manager within the company, spent some time in India, Mm. outsourcing to India, and then finally came and found home here at Core Business Solutions. So I've been here at Core for about 14 years now, Wow! believe it or not. Wow. But you're only like 35. I know. Hey, I love it. Thanks. What a compliment. (laughs) But yeah, and and I've been involved in almost every standard Mm -hmm. that we have here at Core and help. uh, I was uh, instrumental in developing the CMMI program, Mm -hmm. been handing that off. And uh, so it's been, yeah, a journey for me. Yeah. We're really glad to have you here today and great amount of history for you to be able to know exactly what you're talking about. We're coming into CMMI. Well, let's get started. And I think the very first question I'm going to ask is, what is CMMI? I know it stands for Capability Maturity Model Integration, but that can be a little confusing. Could you elaborate a little bit? Sure. I'd be happy to. Well, CMMI is a globally recognized process improvement framework. Okay. That helps organizations streamline their processes, improve performance, and achieve high levels of efficiency. So it was developed by Software Engineer Institute, SEI. Okay. One, and more acronyms, you know. Yes, yes. At Carnegie Mellon. So it, basically, it's uh, widely used across various industries to drive continuous improvement and to deliver quality results. Okay. So on this podcast, we talk a lot about ISO 9001. Could you compare it a little bit to ISO 9001? Differences, yeah. similarities? Yeah, they are two very different standards, okay. if you will. ISO focuses more on your processes, mm-hmm. where CMMI focuses more on the projects and the evidence that you're meeting those various practices or artifacts right. that meet those practices. So we're looking at the evidence. It's a maturity model, which means we're expected to have things in place and that Things are routine, if you will. Okay. They happen on a regular basis. Gotcha. Where ISO isn't in that much of a detail in those areas of your your projects and practices. Right. So CMMI is going to be more structured? Yeah. I think CMMI is more structured, more detail-oriented. Okay. And really heavily looking in the artifacts, the evidence that we're meeting these requirements. And, you know, not just have a process in place. Right, right. So with that in mind... Where do we see companies needing to be certified to CMMI? That's a good question. I see the majority of clients seeking CMMI when there are contracts that require it. Okay. Especially in the government sector. Okay. We're looking at, you know, various things. They'll ask that, you know, maybe we have a quality management system, Mm -hmm. ISO. Another requirement they would have is having CMMI. Okay. And you actually get points toward, you know, achieving that contract. Right. So in the government space, it's big. So a good bit in the government place. Seen it in other places as well where some companies want to drive improvement. Mm -hmm. They like having those credentials Mm -hmm. because it tells people that, you know, I've achieved a certain level of performance and quality within our organization. Well, and the word maturity is probably a really nice word to have. Um, Absolutely. When it comes to business. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It, it shows that, hey, this is standard for us. Right. And we do it all the time. Yep. That completely makes sense. So how does CMMI help organizations improve their process efficiency and their overall performance? I would say that the first area involves process improvement. Okay. CMMI focuses on optimizing organizational processes to improve the performance and reduce risk 
in the project and you know it, it involves the product development mm-hmm. and service delivery and there's other there's areas that it focuses on but it's all about process improvement and reducing that risk and ad hoc if you will anything else i think uh, another thing is when we talk about the best practices cmi is based on industry best practices okay so that helps an organization uh, set guidelines and practices to achieve a higher maturity level and better performance. So once again, it goes back to that performance right. issues, right. How, we, how we improve it there. Okay. I think there is also the appraisal process that you have to go through. Mm-hmm. ISO, we call it the audit. Okay. In CMMI, we call it the appraisal okay. process. So that appraisal process is very detailed oriented. We call that benchmark appraisals. Okay. So you need to reach a certain benchmark to be certified. Right, right. Exactly. So it it achieves, uh, you know, as we go up the maturity model, it requires even more and more details and meeting the various practices for those. And we go from, they have maturity levels one through five, which we'll talk about a little bit later, I believe. Yes. And one being the lowest level, five being the highest maturity level. So I think finally, by adopting the CMMI, organizations aim to improve productivity, uh, enhance their their quality, reduce costs, of course, Mm -hmm. is part of that too, and deliver projects on time and within budget. And that's a a really important thing. Yeah, On time and in in budget. budget. Yeah. Yeah. Which, when you're coming with government work, that's always like what they want. Yes. <laughs> do they have to stay in budget? Not necessarily, but hey, we want you to stay in we budget. We do. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. So you mentioned we have five different maturity levels. Could you give us a little bit about each level? You don't have to go into super detail, but maybe what's different. Sure. Sure. Well, let's start off with uh, the first level. Level one is to is considered to be the initial level where processes are unpredictable and reactive. Well, that's never good being reactive. So, yeah, no. So, it represents the most basic and unstructured level of the process maturity model where processes are largely ad hoc mm-hmm. or unpredictable or more reactive like we had mentioned earlier. Right. Really at this level organizations rely heavily on individual efforts rather than formal processes which lead to inconsistent performance and outcomes. Mm-hmm. So we're not consistent in what we 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 produce. There is little or no process discipline, obviously, <laughs> since it's ad hoc. Yeah. It is minimal documentation and frequent crisis arrive. So you we, know? That, yeah, that's, that's probably not a great thing. No, and that's not a, a good thing. So success depends on key individuals making the organization vulnerable to risk. Okay. Um, so, you know, and, and keep in mind, there is no benchmark or appraisal for a level one because okay. it's so fundamental. Yeah. You're just basically, so basically you're just kind of learning how to be proactive versus react. Right. Okay. Right. What about level two? So level two is considered to be what they call managed and it's the lowest level that can be assessed okay. or appraised. It involves processes that are planned and managed but still have that little bit of reactivity to it. Okay. We're reacting a little bit more. So in this level, we introduce formal, formalized and repeatable processes for managing individual projects. And once again, keep in mind, it's talking about these projects. Right. So it moves away from that chaotic and uh, ad hoc nature of level one. Okay. Organizations at that level implement basic project management practices such as planning and requirement management and risk management. Those are some of the things that are involved in this level two okay. as you move on. Processes are documented and tracked. So we're getting away from that ad hoc. Now right. we're actually making documents that tell us how we have to manage this project. Gotcha. And, and we identify those deliverables and so forth. So this leads to improved project outcomes, reduce risk, and enhance 
customer satisfaction. So really, level two lays the foundation for a broader organizational process improvement that is going to be transferred to higher levels. All right. So before we go into level three, is this something that your goal is to get to level five? Or can you just come in and say, we just need to be certified to level four? Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I say the majority of the appraisals are looking at level two as an introductory mm-hmm. to this area. Level three is more common. Level four and five are really hard to achieve, and very few companies focus on a level four or a level five, okay. especially level five. Mm-hmm. It requires a lot more diligence, and now we have. Uh, And we'll talk a little bit more Mm -hmm. about those, but it requires more data monitoring and management there. So yeah, two and three are the more common. When we work with clients, we say, you know, if you're thinking about a level two or maybe eventually level three, just go to level three. Yeah. To start with that. So advantage of level two, it takes less time to put in place. Mm -hmm. Level three, a little bit more, but why double your cost? Right. Let's go right to level three. So you're really looking for one level. So so when you say two or three, what is level three? What do we have in there? Well, level three is identified as defined, where processes are well defined, proactive, not reactionary. Not reactionary. And standardized across the organization. So we're looking at it the whole way across our organization. Okay. Not that the other level two is not, but more focused on the entire organization. All right. It marks a significant shift from project specific processes to standardized, well documented processes applied organizationally wide. Okay. Okay. So we're broadening the scope a little bit here. Right. So while it focuses on the projects, but we're also looking at it more on the organizational-wide side of this. At this level, processes are tailored to meet specific needs but remain consistent across all projects and departments. So we want to make sure there's consistency so that Group A isn't doing their own thing, Group B is doing their thing, but that we have a consistent template, if you will, across all departments within the organization. So there's a strong focus on process definitions and, you know, continuous improvement. Once again, you'll see that word over and over again, Mm -hmm. as you do in ISO. Yes, you do. Continuous improvement and support by a formalized quality assurance function. So a lot of times, while we have CMMI and ISO are different projects, ISO 9001 has a lot to do with CMMI. We leverage a lot of our ISO methodologies and processes Mm -hmm. for our CMMI uh, level three, particularly. So we can leverage all those and integrate that into the CMMI project. So I can see how with it being, now we're looking at it being broadened to the entire business. ISO generally in your scope is going to cover your entire business. Right. I know there are some things that you can exclude certain places or departments, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. for the mm-hmm. most part, you're looking at it being a, a, a business wide. Yeah. So this level three leads to more predictability, results, higher quality deliverables, enhanced scalability, laying the foundation for moving toward data-driven quantitative management at level four. Okay. So it kind of sets the framework for moving to the next level. Just like two set the framework Mm -hmm. for level three, three sets it for four, four sets it for five as well. Well, Rick, that's all the time we're going to have for today. We'll pick up next week with level four and five of CMMI. And we want to thank everyone who's listened to our podcast today. We hope that it's been informative for you. Now, if you're looking for more information about Core Business Solutions, how we can help you with ISO certification, cybersecurity, CMMI, or customized training, please email us at info at You can also visit our website at www.thecoresolution.com. And if you haven't already followed us on your favorite podcast platform or YouTube, be sure to do so. That way you won't miss the next Quality Hub podcast when it's released next week. Have a great day, everyone.